Hey guys, this is Kremi Galatria with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are what are the common types of relays used in HVACR. Now these are not relays, and I'll explain why. This video is sponsored by our friends over at Danfoss, and you can access their free e-lessons through the link in the description section below. So a relay uses a copper coil, and when powered, it turns into an electrical magnet in order to open and close contacts. So on this one, we would power between 1 and 3, and any time we did that, it's going to switch this contact. So the, the two that are connected to the normally closed, which are this one right here and this one, are going to open up. And then your contact between here and here are going to close. So that's how a relay works. Depending on the relay, you could have multiple contacts. You could have, uh, say, two sets of normally open contacts that then end up closing, such as in the case of a general purpose relay. We'll be identifying each of these relays but I first want to go over these right here, and this is the bottom of a sequencer. So this is a sequencer, and that's not a relay because it doesn't use electrical magnetism. It uses a heater pan in order to flex a thermodisc. So anytime you have a thermodisc, that's going to be a switch. So it just flexes and it pushes up on rods, which end up closing contacts. So this right here is just controlled by this little tiny disc. So this, the same thing, it has a thermo disc right here, so it flexes, and this is a thermal overload, so are these right here, so these are for a compressor, thermal overload, so they have a thermo disc inside. These right here are, well, not this, and not this, but these right here are PTC thermistors, and what that means is there's a little tiny pill-type thermistor on the inside of these, and this thing right here is going to have resistance. This is the PTC thermistor. It's going to have a certain set uh, resistance value. And then what happens is as you draw current through it, the resistance value is going to go ahead and increase. It's going to increase to the point where it's going to open up the electrical circuit. So these are used to help start the compressor. So this one's going to have one of these inside. And this one, since it has a contact in the middle, is going to have two PTC thermistors inside. And then this one has one right, right in the center right here. This right here is a flame rollout switch. So this uses a thermo disc and it's manually resettable. So that is not a relay, it's just a thermo disc. And this as well, this right here is a compressor protector. This usually goes in the common up top on a uh, compressor. And once again, there's a thermo disc inside. So those are not relays. They don't have any electrical magnetism inside that's occurring in order to open or close contacts. Relays are used a lot on control boards. Anytime you see one of these black boxes, that's a relay. So I opened up one relay right here so you can see. You can see the copper coil right there. And you can see contacts right here. And same thing over here. You see a, another coil and then you have tape around it. And then you have your contacts right here on the side. I'm going to take you in for a closer look at each of these so you can see the contacts, but these are fan relays, these are current starting relays, these are potential relays, this is a general purpose or multi-purpose relay, and this is a three-pole contactor, two-pole contactor, single-pole contactor, and ice cube relay or plug-in type relay. So you know I have individual troubleshooting of each of these relays listed in the description section below. These right here are current starting relays and they get attached onto the compressor between the start and the run taps. So what's happening is you will have no continuity between the start and run, and then what's gonna happen is when you go to start the compressor up, a high current is being drawn, and there's a little uh, metal cylinder on the inside, and that's going to get sucked up to the contacts. It's gonna close the connection between here and here. It's only gonna be very temporarily, and it's going to allow voltage to go to the start winding in order for the compressor to start, and then the iron core is going to drop back down and these two taps are going to be disconnected again. So this helps the compressor start up. The iron core in the inside is lifted due to the electrical magnetism. This is the potential relay and you have normally closed contacts between 1 and 2 and then a coil between 2 and 5. So what's going to happen is your start capacitor is going to be in play and, it's, and this relay is going to wait for the pickup voltage from the compressor to power between 2 and 5 and it's going to suck this in, it's going to open up that contact in order to kick out the start capacitor. So, so this is used in order to help the compressor turn on and it will disconnect the start capacitor. 
These are fan relays. This right here is a 12 amp fan relay. This is an 8 amp fan relay. And this is the inside of a 12 amp fan relay. So what happens is you have a coil between 1 and 3. And what's going to happen is it's going to open these contacts and close these contacts. So it's going to basically push this downwards. And that's all due to this little piece of metal getting sucked up over to the metal. It's just turning into a magnet in order to open and close contacts. Right here on the side, there's a wiring diagram. So it'll say between five and six are normally closed and between two and four are normally open. And that will reverse when you're applying the voltage to the coil on here. So here's the fan relay. We're gonna go ahead and power it. So this is a three pole contactor. If you look on this side, you have the coil over here and these come in different voltages for the coil, such as this one right here, uses 120 volts in order to open and close the contacts between here and over on this side, and then this one and this one. So it has three separate poles that it can connect and disconnect at the same time. This right here is a single pole contactor, and this is a two pole contactor. Now you see this one is good. This one is actually burnt and actually closed. So there is no uh, popping back up on this one. So so this one is stuck in the closed position, so this one's bad. So just like the fan relays, you want to pay attention to the FLA rating. So if you go to replace a contactor with a 40 FLA rating, then you need to have a matching one. So one that has a, a 40 full load amp rating. So this one was only 30 amp. And what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and power this with our 24 volts. These come in a variety of different voltages for the coil in order to close these contacts down. But contactors are going to be normally open between the poles. We'll go ahead and power this contactor. So it sucks down. So the FLA reading will have to do with the contacts themselves and also the magnetic force in order to suck these down to hold them tight. Here's a nice cube relay and it has the the coil voltage right here that we can use as well as the amperage ratings for the particular voltages across the contacts. And right here you have these two contacts are for the coil and then this is where your voltage would come in at and then it would get connected to this, this uh, brass piece right here. And you see that it would be normally closed with this. And so basically between here and here are normally closed and between here and here are normally open. And then it reverses when you power the coil. Lastly, we have the general purpose relay. And right here you have the wiring diagram right on the top. And so from 1 to 3 is normally open, but between 1 and 2 is normally closed. And the same thing here, you have between 4 and 6 are normally open, but between 4 and 5 are normally closed. And down here you have your your taps for your coil, so your incoming voltage coming in in order to open and close these two sets of contacts. So right here you have a fan control, fan control relay, and so you have this right on the top, and so these two high points right here are where the voltage comes into the relay at, because that will be the lower part on the actual relay right here. If you're looking for relay troubleshooting videos, I have them linked in the description section below, as well as some of the tools that I use out in the field. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.